I set a benchmark to film 100 main plants. Identifying the plants of your ecosystem is just one way to get more connected with the bioregion that you're a part of. A lot of the species in Maine are going to overlap with the surrounding area. Our general bioregion is called the Northeastern Woodlands. I'll try to identify as many plants as I can. So these, there's a little colony of them here. Notice that they have opposite leaves where the stem goes and then you have leaf, 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 leaf. These are known as false Solomon seal. They get some pretty cool flowers. I'll probably try to throw a picture up. This, this is our saparilla. And from the untrained eye, you'd look here and all you'd see is just little green plants. You wouldn't necessarily know what you're looking at, but I can see that there's three or four species at least in here. We come in closer, you start looking at the branches and the stems. Here's another Solomon seal. And if we look at this into three stems right here at this junction, and from the top, you can see it's split into three. And then you have this triple pair of leaves and right down you have this double pair and they, you can see there's a bunch of them here and one thing that's cool about sarsaparilla is the root. If I go down here you can see it starts to get a bit of a rhizome right above the surface and if you scratch that with your students or yourself and you give it a smell you are going to smell one of the main components of old time root beer. Trifoliate leaf here. See one, two, three, nice equilateral triangle. Oh, but underneath, check this out. This is a f species of orchid common in Maine. Well, orchids are actually all fairly rare, but this is the trillium. Another pack of trilliums. Now you don't necessarily want to try to transplant these. Better to leave them in place. Orchids are very temperamental to their soil types and their habitats. Very cool to see such abundance of them out here though. This one might not be good for now. It's actually better for when it's in bloom. It should be in bloom soon. All these little single leafed plants that you see scattered amongst the forest floor underneath the others. Uh, this is very common throughout Maine, and it's called Canadian Mayflower. Um, right now there are no flowers, but all of these little single leaf plants, see it's got a double leaf in this little bundle. Hopefully that's in focus. One of the cool things about plant identification is you get to start seeing the division of the family tree you see uh, taxonomic cousins or evolutionary cousins. This is just a little roadside example, but look, you start seeing this like three lobed leaves here. There's two different species. Now if you're totally unfamiliar, you may not know that this is maple. Now this one's a very easy one to identify. It's very simple compared to this one. This one is just very simple lobes. You do start to see that little fifth lobe there. A common name is either moose maple or striped maple. Moose maple, kind of like this big hoof, big footprint almost. Um, these can get really big. And then the other common name is striped maple. And I don't know if you can tell here, but there's some striations along the branch. Striped maple is an understory plant. It won't get very big. It won't develop a huge crown. It grows in the dappled sunlight of these mixed hardwood forests. You can see the light trickling through around me. That's what these big leaves are for, is to catch just whatever sunlight can come through. Now a nickname that's always funny with kids if you're teaching students is, this is also called Hunter's Helper. It's actually a pretty soft and smooth leaf. Quite a good hand grip there. Great for going number two in the woods. Um, Hunter's helper, that's moose maple or striped maple. It's 
It's a great plant for growing in the shade and on disturbed soils. Great alternative to grass if you have a shaded lawn. One thing I'd like to mention, get a field guide like the Peterson Guide to Edible Plants or Medicinal Plants and use the internet. Start learning plants one at a time. Find something in your backyard and go through a field guide, go through a website. Figure out one plant. The way your brain works, I think it's called your reticular activating system. You just, you notice what you know more. For example, if you start driving a new model of car, uh, you start noticing other people driving that car more often. The same goes with plants. Once you learn one species and learn to identify it well, you're always going to start seeing it again and again. And like the ABCs, you'll start picking up a knowledge one plant at a time. In many traditional cultures, they say a five-year-old would already know many of the edible plants in their area and many of the poisonous plants, just out of necessity and exposure. I always thought that our fascination with games like Pokemon, which revolve around learning all these different species of fictional monsters, stems from the very innate biological desire for human beings to want to know categories, we want to label, we want the names. And learning these names, there's so many names, the names aren't exactly that important, but uh, getting that knowledge empowers a human being. It's great for adults, it's great for children. Try to integrate this into your walks or your nature programs.